Hi guys, welcome to my new YouTube channel, which is chronicling the restoration of my beloved Powell's 46 International Fast Cruiser. I've had Dreamfinder for coming up 14 years now, and in that time we've done a lot of work. Eight years ago she was re-engined, and we spent quite a while sorting out niggly issues with speed and overheating. As part of the re-engineing, we had to rip out the bench seating in the saloon, so the saloon's been re-trimmed and custom seating has been made. The autopilot was a Heath Robinson affair that didn't work, so that has now been replaced. And four years ago, the hull was gel peeled and copper coated. Problems with earth bonding have seen us replacing the props. And then in June of 2020, we sailed her 540 miles from Southampton round to Fleetwood on the Fylde coast in the Irish Sea. We hit a force six in Cardigan Bay on our journey round and limped into Hollyhead with our dive platform hanging off and one of the bilge pumps permanently on. Uh, on arrival in Fleetwood, this dive platform has now been repaired and I'm ready to tackle the major project of repairing the rear deck and refitting the back cabin. So let's uh, take a look at Dreamfinder. Welcome to Dreamfinder, uh, my pals 46 uh, International Fast Cruiser. So, shall we? Well, it's been a couple of months since I've been here because of lockdown, but uh, she's not looking too bad, a little bit dusty, but so let me give you the tour, let me see what you think. So this is the saloon area of Dreamfinder. Um, this was effectively re-trimmed uh, about six years ago when the engines were redone. So uh, yeah, there's the, the con for the flybridge. Moving down the stairs here, uh, we move into the galley area. So uh, these are the original bench seats. Uh, the galley, the, uh, the microwave needs replacing the door, smashed on that unfortunately. Uh, but it's, uh, it's not looking too bad. Here we have uh, Cabin number one, this is a little bunk cabin. Um, can't really see much in here, I forgot to put the, the batteries on, but uh, it's used at the moment for just storing. I've got the mattress in there from the from the back cabin. Uh, we then have a, a head in here, uh, which needs a little bit of uh, tidying up. The, uh, the toilet has been replaced, but I've not actually done the uh, surrounding area. This is the V-berth, um, chain lockers behind the mirror, we've got wardrobes either side, here, okay, and we've also got another ensuite head here as well, uh, everything works, but it's uh, obviously a little bit dated, um, and then uh, we move on to the problem child. So, uh, this back deck here, as you can see, um, is a sort of a fake teak deck. Um, it has been laid on top of the original teak deck, that's part of the problem. Uh, on these boats originally the door, the saloon door here, was actually vertical and came down to this bottom step here. Uh, and you can actually feel in here the, the original track. <coughs> so whoever has had this boat in the past has altered it to make the door sit onto the top step, which is fine because it actually gives you a bit more room in here, but um, gives us a problem because underneath here, the teak deck extends to here. Okay, so that gives us a bit of an issue. Let me just uh, put the batteries on and then we can have some lights. So this is the, for the batteries. So that should give us some light. Okay. So we move down into the back cabin and this is where the problems start. Okay. So 
it is a nice big double cabin but as you can see I don't think anybody would want to stay in here right now uh, and in actual fact I can see water dripping over here already so you can see water dripping down this is this is all wet here okay so what you've got is here is the stairs okay up the side okay and this is marine ply this is the back of the steps and you can see this is the fiberglass and it's being cut don't know why it's being cut like that but it's being cut here is a drain that is the drain on the bottom step and that has been filled in so basically the problem I've got is that wherever there is bright work like here again water's dripping off this at some point somebody's had the railings off and when they put them back on they've not sealed the screws move over to here this is the rear deck cleat so there is a cleat that is under here and you can probably just about see the fiberglass on the studs and then there's another cleat further in and there's no reinforcement there at all it's literally just been bolted straight to the marine ply um, this is the the rear and it's been tabbed in as we can see here it's been tabbed in so um, the fiberglass extends uh, and this I think is condensation uh, the fiberglass extends to this beam here okay and this beam here uh, it's wet but I think a lot of that is the water is tracking along it and it's tracking along from this deck hatch here which has obviously been leaking for quite some time so you can see the water in the beam there and behind here is wet so um, so all of that lot is a problem the beams themselves are effectively laminated together so they're hardwood strips that have been laminated across and looking at the beams I think the majority of them are okay unless we get right to the end and here you can see it's gone and the same here so I'm looking at this and wondering whether I've got to replace those beams but the fiberglass basically well there isn't any or if there is it's very minimal so that's that's the problem guys uh, definitely need to replace this beam this is underneath the saloon door and you can see over here it's gone completely and this is that triangle that I was talking about upstairs so um, yeah a bit of a problem uh, back of the steps there okay so um, this wall I think I'm going to keep I'm just going to strip it um, moving into the head behind this is the other steps and they are soft and you can feel it moving here so um, again this all needs to come out you can see here the beam has gone completely again uh, and here and it's the same thing again this is the fitting for the bright work and um, whoever has had it off in the past has then not sealed it when they put it back in so this wall's got to come out all this has got to come out this has got to come out which takes us into the shower area okay and all that has to come off down here is um, the fittings for the dive platform and the dive platform I repaired um, in the summer when we got here from uh, Southampton so um, 
and then we've got the, the, the steering gear down there as well. I don't know whether you can see that very well on the video because of the lighting. Uh, we have a, a three hole there which is jammed and will need to be replaced as part of this. Moving up here, then basically this here is where the two moulds actually join together. So below here is the, is the hole, above here is the superstructure and there is a rubbing strip here. Okay, uh, and what I want to show you is that on the outside. So, yeah, a lot of work to do. Yeah, um, this needs fiberglass underneath, I think, to make it um, waterproof. So, I'm still working out how I'm going to do that, guys, and it will be really useful for any suggestions. That wall there needs to come out and be rebuilt, uh, and the wardrobes need to be rebuilt there as well. Okay. Um, under this little lot, there is actually the 1500 litre diesel tank, and then behind that wall there is the engine room, and uh, I'll show you that in a second. So, this is Streamfinder's engine room. Probably the warmest place on the boat because I've got a couple of uh, these frost stats running in here just to keep the temperature above zero. Uh, nice little diesel generator over there. Yeah, here is one of the uh, 305 lumps, the uh, Volvo Tam D61A. Um, over there, hydraulics, uh, that's for gears and for the throttle. Uh, and then this is the infamous exhaust elbow that snapped and caused all the trouble. Behind that you can just see the diesel tank there. Okay, So these engines are not the original engines, these are the ones that we, I had um, fitted uh, about six, seven years ago now. Uh, and uh, yeah, we've done quite a lot of work. Over here you can see the Wabasto and there's a little bit of work needs to be done to that because, um, well, the pipes, uh, there's a big gap over there on the pipe. I need to get some way of fitting that properly and securing it down. There's lots of things in here that are loose that need just tidying up and sorting, really. Uh, and that's, uh, that's a job for this project. Um, this is the original entrance, this is, this is the stairs, they lift up and you crawl through. Um, I decided that wasn't really what I wanted. So I made this, um, this hatch in the saloon uh, so that you can get into the engine room from the saloon and uh, then do what you need to do and it's a lot easier. And then we've got a hatch that just drops down to cover that. Just looking outside, you can see here these are the steps. And uh, this uh, brush steel cover has been added by the previous owners because the you can see here where the gel is cracking. And that's caused by people constantly getting on and off the boat pulling on the railings. So you can see there it goes all the way up. That is the fitting that I showed you downstairs that is leaking and I think that crack is the reason why we've got all the water leaking on the steps. Here is the cleats that I was talking about. You can see you know the inner cleat here. Okay and um, at some point this boat has taken a real thump at the rear end and you can tell this because the actual railings themselves are twisted and there is a kink in one of the pipes here okay this is the other side again the same sort of thing so you can see here the cleat there's the bright work, bright work there's the fitting again and over this side, I have actually done a little bit of temporary repair 
on the gel here uh, to try and um, stop it from leaking through. At some point this flybridge has been extended and I don't know whether you can see but the actual uh, fiberglass here has started to pit and um, it's looking a bit unsightly plus there's also handprints all over it and it's cracking there at the joint so as part of this that will need um, sorting and you can see how it sits on the original frame there. So all of this here is uh, effectively not original and uh, yeah, needs to be you know, uh, repaired. Fiberglass itself is looking pretty good. Um, there is a couple of little holes on the main deck where there were Prestards. Uh, there is a little bit of starring like this um, which I assume has been caused by a collision at some point or something like that. But the main issue we've got is at the back. And again, <coughs> you can see here that the, the gel is all crazed okay, and needs um, basically stripping back and repairing. Uh, at the back here, as I say, she's had a bash at some point. You can see the water dripping off there. But you see this massive crack along the transom. This runs the full width of the boat. And although it's nice and dry inside, uh, underneath that I think is a hardwood beam. Uh, which I don't think is actually structural, believe it or not. But that all needs to come off and come out to be able to um, strip it all back and make it dry again, repair it. Which means that all this bright work here needs to come off. The davits will need to come off. Um, the step there will need to come off. And all the bright work on this side as well will need to come off. Now, um, as I said before, I think she's had a, a bit of a bash at the rear end at some point because, and I don't know whether it's going to be visible, but there is actually a crack in the teak. And... Steady on, Bill. It's somewhere around here uh, in the tow rail so I'm gonna have to see about um, repairing that as well so the, um, the dive platform as I said earlier that dive platform um, came adrift just on uh, the outskirts of Anglesey Hollyhead so um, yeah that has been repaired this is a couple of the screws there are a bit proud they need to be bolted in properly uh, but they're not stainless steel i was i needed to order some stainless steel bolts so that's why they are like what they are when she comes out of the water this time i'll get that done uh, as part of the jobs so yeah that is dreamfinder so, one of the reasons for coming to Dreamfinder today is just start the engines, make sure the batteries are okay. Just give them a little bit of a run through, let them warm up. So let's give it a go. Not bad after eight weeks of standing doing nothing, is it? Let me just uh, put the ventilator on. And we'll make sure that everything else is working while we're at it. I thought this might be interesting to see. This is the original uh, owner's manual for Dreamfinder. And uh, it, it's quite interesting to look at. So um, it's actually typewritten and um, goes through the owner's manual 
uh, all the bits and pieces about it, the British registration, all that sort of thing, the introductions. The interesting thing here on page three is that um, when Dreamfinder was launched, she wasn't called Dreamfinder, she was called Lady Roxanne. So, but there's all the hold numbers, prop sizes, dimensions, all that sort of thing in here. So it's quite a nice thing to have um, with the boat itself. Uh, and it goes through things like daily checks, that sort of thing. There's wiring diagrams in here. Uh, there's all sorts of interesting stuff. Uh, and it comes with a briefcase full of other uh, information about the boat, uh, including an owner's manual for the engines, uh, there's the Raython stuff, um, there's um, all the information regarding the depth finders, the um, gearbox manuals, all that sort of stuff, the hydraulics etc. And all the paperwork in here including things like the customs invoice uh, as well. So uh, all of that has been kept um, intact and uh, provides quite a nice little history. So Dreamfinder, I know, started out life as um, Lady Roxanne. And I know from the customs documentation that she was imported into the UK with the name of Special Reserve. And I did have an email from the previous owner explaining why he changed the name, but I can't for the life of me find it. So, uh, But it's, it's interesting to know that she wasn't always called Dreamfinder. In fact, um, the earliest record I've got of Dreamfinder as a name is from 1994. Okay guys, so that's it for this video. Um, I'm still learning as we're going along with this, but uh, hopefully you found that interesting and uh, you can see there's a lot of um, things to do over the coming weeks. Uh, unfortunately, we've just gone into national lockdown, so I'm not quite sure what I'm going to be able to do between now and the next video. Um, but we've got to find Dreamfinder a new home, possibly Glass and Dock. Uh, find a shed to put her in um, and do all of that uh, and then we've actually got to get Dreamfinder into that location so there will be um, a lot of content coming up in the coming weeks but um, yeah hopefully things will sort themselves out uh, stay safe if you um, like what I've done so far please give me a thumbs up uh, and hit the subscribe button down below. Uh, as I said before, I am really keen for advice. Uh, so if you've got any advice on what to do to um, lay fiberglass, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be ripping the marine ply up uh, and then I want to lay a fiberglass layer uh, before I then lay a, core, lay a core and then a fiberglass on top before I then put the deck on top of that. So uh, any suggestions on that will be really appreciated. And also when we come to the beams as well, um, I'm not sure whether those beams are structural or not. Um, certainly, given the state of them, I don't think they're actually holding a lot up at the moment, so I'm guessing not. But um, again, if you have any suggestions, then please put them in the comments area down below. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you again soon.